hi everyone welcome back to free engineering school uh, in my previous videos uh, we discussed about the structural simulations uh, which comprises of linear non-linear and quasi static simulations with uh, some uh, basic uh, abacus examples so in coming videos we'll just uh, go in deeper to understand uh, what kind of uh, material curve we can adopt for particular simulation and what are the element types can be used so in today's agenda we'll just uh, touch upon uh, engineering and uh, true stress strain uh, you, you might have all know the basic stress strain curve and we we'll just will discuss uh, once again and then uh, we'll discuss about the types of uh, stress strain curve for finite element analysis here we'll discuss about the basic definition uh, and the difference uh, between the engineering and uh, true stress strain curve as you can see the standardized uh, stress strain curve from 0 to 1 we'll call it as a elastic zone where uh, whatever the load you apply uh, and leave and uh, leave the loop the, the the component will comes to its original position later if you further uh, increase the load uh, it will start yielding uh, like uh, it will try to uh, deform uh, then uh, it will not come to its original position and we'll call it as a uh, plasticization so where uh, we'll get a permanent deformation of the particular component this uh, origin 2 to 3 we'll call it as a strain hardening uh, where material can uh, withstand their capability before failure once it reaches the ultimate uh, strength point it will start uh, to go for fracture uh, this from point 3 to 4 we'll call it as a necking zone so uh, beyond the ultimate strength if you apply the load uh, the material is going to uh, fail uh, the component is going to be fail and here uh, the basic Engs modulus uh, formula will calculate based on the slope that is uh, uh, rise by run uh, we'll call it as a stress by strain and uh, in the second graph if you see the uh, true stress strain curve the the red line is uh, true stress strain curve and uh, the blue is uh, engineering stress strain so main difference between these two is uh, in the engineering stress we will consider the original cross sectional area for throughout the calculation of all the stress and uh, strain but uh, in the true stress strain we will we'll calculate with respect to the instantaneous uh, cross sectional area L means uh, where the deformation will start we will take that cross sectional area and we will find out the stress and uh, with respect to stress and the strains so by definition uh, uh, sorry uh, if you see the graph uh, between the true stress and uh, engineering stress in the true stress obviously uh, the stress level is very high because we will consider the instantaneous uh, cross sectional area so the stress will be high and uh, apparently the strain will reduce uh, in the true stress strain as compared to engineering stress by definition we can uh, say uh, the stress is uh, directly proportional to the force upon uh, original cross sectional area and uh, in the engineering strain again the change in length uh, to the original length divided by original length that is uh, delta L by uh, L naught so coming to true stress the sigma t is the true stress we will call it uh, mentioned it by sigma t and uh, it is uh, the main uh, comparison we can take it and we can find the true stress strain curve uh, based on the engineering uh, stress values as well so here uh, the engineering stress uh, into 1 plus epsilon we can find out the true stress and likewise the for engineering strain we can uh, use a logarithmic of 1 plus epsilon so these are the basic uh, strength of material formulas where we can find uh, the true stress strain curve with uh, standardized uh, uh, engineering uh, stress stress strain curve so here we'll discuss about the various types of uh, uh, stress strain curve uh, used for uh, finite element analysis there are five types 
we'll we'll discuss one by one uh, first one is a linear elastic uh, model uh, where as the name indicates we'll use a linear material properties uh, in the finite element analysis uh, so most of the cases will be a linear linearly linear elastic materials where uh, the convergence will be ease and based on the requirement we will we'll draw on the newer rule uh, to find out the uh, failure zone so we will we'll take uh, one more uh, session to understand how we can uh, uh, build the model with respect to numerization uh, to avoid uh, the convergence issues for assembly level as well as uh, to to get a uh, simulation in uh, very less time so this is uh, all about the linear elastic model in the simple uh, definition we will use uh, only elastic material properties but in the linear uh, particular perfectly uh, plastic model we will we'll consider the plastification uh, we will consider the plastic data uh, the but the uh, elastic perfectly plastic curve is most conservative uh, as it assumes the stress does not increase the beyond yield so if you see this blue uh, line uh, after this uh, yield strength reach the, the 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 stress is completely uh, constant it is not going to be change so this is the second type of uh, curve where we will we'll consider the yield but uh, it will be constant throughout the uh, analysis so the third one is uh, bilinear plastic plasticity model uh, uh, this is more, more or less similar but here um, you, if you see the red line uh, the ultimate uh, stress uh, stress is uh, continuously a uh, straight line uh, it is not going to be changed uh, as it means uh, we will not get any uh, failure zone here it will be uh, infinitely uh, constant straight line so by definition uh, the stress can increase beyond the yield but uh, the failure is assumed uh, not to occur that means uh, that the failure will not occur in this uh, if you use this uh, bilinear plastic curve so the these are uh, so this is third uh, one is a bilinear plastic mode uh, the fourth type is uh, trilinear plasticity trilinear plasticity model uh, so here uh, we'll consider the yield strength and ultimate strength beyond ultimate strength whatever the load we apply we'll consider it as a the 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 uh, the model will consider it as a constant and it is not going to uh, change anywhere so by definition uh, we'll call it as uh, the stress will not increase beyond the ultimate uh, strength of the material so the fifth one is uh, multi linear plastic plasticity model uh, this is the as like uh, for each point it is going to be uh, uh, change the change their uh, material curve but it is more or like uh, the engineering stress strain curve which is which is a very con accurate uh, representation but uh, we will rarely use this kind because it is uh, some of the standardized material property we can have it but uh, most of the materials will not have this kind of curves so we will we'll, we'll avoid uh, these kind of uh, multilinear plasticity but uh, as you uh, as you can see uh, this if you have this kind of uh, plasticity data uh, the uh, solution will be more or less uh, accurate uh, with respect to the actual scenario so these are the five uh, major types of uh, uh, stress strain curve uh, which are uh, commonly used for finite element analysis uh, based on the structural uh, integrity and structural study behavior uh, which uh, applications will involve uh, in your studies can be uh, utilized uh, this kind of uh, so going forward uh, we will take a one on one example to understand how we can deploy uh, these curves in future uh, studies so this is all about uh, uh, 
the stress strain curve which are generally used for finite element analysis so we'll in the next class we'll discuss uh, about the types of elements uh, we can use it for uh, structural studies so let's close here and uh, please write your comments or any doubts in the comment section so we'll get back to you or uh, you can uh, you can discuss in the further uh, sessions as well so thank you and uh, have a nice day bye for now